One of the issues with the Mercedes Sprinter or VW Crafter tends to be the handbrake. It's a pretty common MOT failure, or worse, if you park on a steep hill and suddenly realise your handbrake seized up. So in this video I'm going to show you two of the things you need to be checking and fixing. My experience is normally about once a year, though in all fairness this isn't um, a particularly typical use because this is a camper so it tends to get left standing for several weeks in between uses. Once you remove the road wheel, it's just a case of leaving back the caliper, uh, don't forget to remove the wear sensors otherwise you'll end up with a warning light on the dashboard pretty much non-stop. Get the uh, brake caliper off from there. Remove the pads. easy. It's another thing that's going to need a little bit of a, a clean up and some copper slip on it before it goes back together. And once those are out the next thing to do will be to uh, remove the carrier which is generally done up pretty tight and you might well need to get uh, both a breaker bar sometimes even a, a tube over the end of the breaker bar to get enough force on or of course if you've got an air wrench that'll make the whole thing a lot easier. Now before you do anything else you'll need to get in underneath the vehicle and um, loosen off the cable adjuster. We'll have a look at how this is put back later on to get the tension right on the cables. But at the moment we're just needing to slacken it right off and get it out of the way. The main reason for this being if we can remove the cable from here we can pull a fair bit of it out at the wheel end of the cable and that will enable us to access the part we need to clean the brake drum off. There's a, a Torx fitting which you might well spot I've had to drill out on this so that will be have, have to be uh, drilled out fully and tapped again. And there's the source of our problem, this uh, somewhat ineffective sort of linkage here which is pulled on by the uh, handbrake cable but you'll see in just a moment it doesn't always move. Remove the uh, springs from the shoes and then remove the two hold back springs that lock them to the back plate. I'll just use a pair of thin nose pliers for this. I'm sure there's a proper tool somewhere that someone will have but they just turn a quarter of a turn and then out they come. the shoes and there's our offending part you'll see that part of the linkage moves freely but the other part doesn't move at all it's worth noting that even if you were to replace the handbrake cable you'd be replacing it from that C's linkage onwards which means that this is still an issue you might well want to address so the easiest way to do it is knock out the pin give the whole thing a real good clean up get it thoroughly lubricated and then put it back together again Now this is the other thing that always tends to seize up is this adjuster. Even if you put it on the right way up, that is um, with the cup opening downwards so that it doesn't collect any water, it still seizes up which means it's more difficult to adjust these brakes properly. So I'm freeing it up here with a pair of pliers. Once I get it off, uh, you can see I have actually greased this before but I'll take it all apart and grease it again before reassembling it to the vehicle. It's really important to adjust the shoes correctly on this before you go anywhere near the cable so having this thing moving freely there are videos on how to adjust the shoes um, if you need that you can have a quick search on YouTube but basically you'll end up putting a screwdriver, flat screwdriver blade in through one of the wheel nut holes and flicking around that little toothed wheel so obviously it's got to move fairly freely otherwise you won't be able to move it at all assemble that part with grease and then we'll uh, put some copper slip onto the other part as well. Give it a turn just to make sure it's absolutely free. And then it's time to start putting the whole thing back together again. 
Now, what I tend to do with this is I tend to assemble that adjuster and one spring, pop the shoes over, get them in position, put the whole back springs onto them. You'll see that in a moment. Just making sure that the handbrake actuator is seated properly into the little notch on the two shoes. Okay, so putting the uh, two holdback springs into place. This often helps to reach behind the back plate and just feel where it's going and make sure it's turned properly and locked on. I have once had the uh, rather expensive experience where one of these springs broke and the handbrake shoe came off and uh, managed to dismantle the entire mechanism requiring quite a few new parts which was rather expensive and then pop the second spring in I'm sure that some expert in the comments will tell me how this is meant to be done but to put this back in I've always hooked it on from the bottom and then get a couple of screwdrivers one to lever it up into place and the other to push back on so that it pops into the uh, locating hole on the brake shoe Time to assemble the whole thing. I tend to put plenty of copper slip around to make sure things can move freely, but I've also given all moving surfaces a really good clean before assembling again. And make sure you plug back in your wear sensor. Okay, so this is the really critical part of the operation. I have adjusted the handbrake by putting a screwdriver in through the drum and turning that little adjuster. So I've got that just right. Now it's about getting this tape cable tension right. And you'll see that the whole mechanism is mounted on a slider. And the reason for that is there's no way to adjust the front section of the handbrake table. So what you do is you slide this whole assembly back just a little bit, just so that it takes up the slack in the front table. Otherwise it'll tend to sort of rattle about all the time underneath the vehicle, which will probably wear through it eventually and not be much good at all. So the correct position is where you're just starting to take up some slack. There you go just like that you can see there and then lock up those two nuts again to hold it to the to the frame and then the last part of the job is to turn that 13 millimeter nut so that we take out the slack from the rear cables please notice we're not adjusting the handbrake with this this is simply to take the slack out of the cables the handbrake adjustment has already been done at each wheel individually and this is the second wheel I've done, so I'm not showing the other one, but that's important to get that done first. Both of them. So just that up, keep on checking the tension on the cables. It, you really are just looking to make sure that the cables aren't flopping around loose, but no more than that. You're absolutely not trying to take up any of the uh, wear in the handbrake, in the shoes, and the drum, or anything like that. So you keep on checking them. Check that you've actually got minimal movement. They're still loose. You're not pulling on them at all, but you don't want them so loose that either they're rubbing against the, the uh, chassis or that they could potentially pop out of that cradle that carries them there. So, hope that's helpful.